Uh, there are some people who actually don't quite enjoy the holidays uh, for varied reasons, for varied experiences and all of that. So we'll be getting into uh, the health topic for this morning, which is holiday depression. We'll be talking about holiday depression. Yes, you'd be thinking that, you know, during the holidays, people would be, would be excited, but actually there are some people who are depressed during this uh, time. And so we'll be discussing that. We'd also like to know what your experiences are, what you think, and how you are feeling all through uh, the season as well. How do you feel about Christmas as it is approaching as well? So send us your comments via WhatsApp. We'll be reading them on the show. So send us your comments uh, via WhatsApp, uh, 020. Uh, 216 Send us your comments, let us know, because we, we would like to know how you feel and what you think about holiday depression as well. So for further discussions, uh, my guest this morning is Philip Ofori Yensumi, who is the founder of Feel Good Services, which is a mental health education setup. Hi. Hi. Phil. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very well this morning. Good, good, good. You were telling me earlier about, you know, the song that, you know, if you gave someone <laughs> a partridge in a pear tree, they wouldn't be quite excited. You know, times you know? has changed. You know? Right? And then the basic expectation of an individual right now is very different. Mm, so if you have a friend or, you know, someone that you're in a relationship with yeah. and you you try to pay your dues to make it count <laughs> and then you, you you try to do that it's yeah. not going to work in these it's days and that is days. you know some of the stresses that we go through nowadays unfortunately that, that's, but hey that's it's true. all part of life indeed indeed <laughs> yeah. actually the the original song has a, a different meaning you know, altogether right. mm -hmm. um in uh, christianity and so it's all linked to that yeah. but all the same let's talk a bit more about the the topic for today which mm -hmm. is holiday depression as i mentioned earlier you think that you know this is a time that people would be excited mm -hmm. to you know spend time with family and friends get off of work some would try to catch up on sleep and things but some people actually do end up being depressed throughout the period and they have to cope with the season until it's mm. over and then they get back to normal. It reminds me of Scrooge. Mm. You know, why do you think that uh, holiday depression is actually something that exists in the first place? And from your office, if we can get a bit of your experience as well. Okay, so let me start with this. Depression is caused by other things, mm. right? So it could be hormonal changes. It could be the times of the year. Um, it mm. could be some other stresses. Okay. So in this case, we're going to talk more about the stresses. Okay, okay. So we're talking about holiday depression, and it is the season where a lot is expected of you. Um, in terms of you have to make people happy, you got to provide stuff for others, the gift that comes with it. And nowadays, the gifts are not that cheap. If, if it's not Momo or iPhone 11 <laughs> or stuff like that, there really is not cutting it. Okay. Right? So um, with all these coming up, it could be stressful. Mm. And we all take in stress differently. So if I have to meet these expectations and due to our system, which I love so much, you know, I stand the family system, the friends becomes family um, and all of that. Mm. So you have to also meet the needs of all these individuals, which mm. really doesn't come on a silver platter. Yeah. So it puts a stress on that individual and that stress can lead to the depression. Mm. Another thing that can also lead to depression at this time of the year yeah. is what probably happened before to you around this time around of the, the year. Time, right, so pre pre prior experiences. Exactly. Right. So if your girlfriend oh, ditched you... Oh, oh okay, all right. Like on 26th <laughs> December. You, you see, oh, oh. so that alone can also be very depressing because it brings back that memory. Oh. If you lost a loved one That's around true. this time of the year, it definitely can be depressing yeah. to you because then you'll be mourning. Yeah. Um, stuff like that yeah. definitely impacts your mood uh, Around this time, this time of the year. I actually yeah. know someone who's not quite excited excited about Christmas because, mm -hmm. she, you know, she lost her dad when she was much younger. And so life actually did change for her yeah, completely. Right. So anytime it's Christmas, don't call me for anything. I'm, you know, busy working and things right. like that. I find that very interesting. Can we talk about other triggers, though, um, of the, you know, feeling of depression during this time of the year? I'd like for us to, you know, explore that a bit more. So there is also something that we call um, seasonal affective disorder. Okay, which is right, yeah. which is also known as seasonal depression. Mm. So as the season changes, mm. your mood also can change. Mm. So God, in His own wisdom, you know, has things in nature that helps us to be able to cope and manage with issues, yeah. right? So as the season changes and then it, got, it gets dark earlier, mm. um, as the season changes and then the weather temperature, the, the things outside, yeah. you know, the leaves like are... Uh, exactly. Rainy yeah. season. Right. 
So when her matan begins and then everything becomes depressive mm. and all of that, it affects our mood. Okay. So in that way, we have to also find ways to cheer ourselves up. Mm. So you have to make a conscious effort to be out there more, to explore nature more, mm. to engage with others more. With others more. Right. Okay. I think we'll get, we'll get to um, how to help ourselves out or how to help mm. others out okay. uh, much later. Let's talk more about the symptoms. How do I know if I have um, you know, this, I, I can actually get mm. to this point um, with, uh, in terms of holiday depression. How do I know that I could get to this point? How do, know, do I know that I am getting to this point? Mm. Or how do I know that someone else, a loved one, is getting to this point? Okay. So how some, um, it will present for some uh, people. And one thing is with depression or any other condition, it presents differently for other mm. people. So my symptom might be very different from yours, but some of the very basic general ones are you tend not to have a good appetite. Yeah. Um, you're not sleeping well. For some, I did a presentation where I talked about appetite and somebody said, Masa, it was those days that if you were depressed, because you didn't have the money, you oh, couldn't eat. You couldn't eat. <laughs> Nowadays, people have the money, so when they're depressed, they overeat. Right. So that is also part of the symptom. Yeah. So some people eat too much, some people eat less, mm. some people are not able to sleep, some mm. people sleep too much. Um, you do not have any joy in activities that you mm. used to en um, engage in. That could also be part of the signs and symptoms. Um, mm. You used to be someone that you were more outgoing, yeah. more outdoor, you know, calling friends, yeah. checking on them and all of that. And nowadays it doesn't intrigue you anymore. Yeah. So all those are part of the signs. Couldn't it be that I just want to mind my business? Why didn't you mind your business in October, November? <laughs> I got to December, then you started minding your business. Right. So let's not mistake it for minding my business, okay. right? So as it's getting closer to this season, and yeah. then you realize that these changes are happening. Mm. It is not minding my business. It's not staying <laughs> in my own world. Yeah. It, it means that something is really happening, That's and you have to pay attention to it. I was thinking of minding my business early this month. Too. Maybe you I use, start to you, check you, on myself. You use that as a defense mechanism. <laughs> It's like I'm minding my business so that I don't have to give gifts for people. Yeah, exactly. Right, but <laughs> that's a good one actually. <laughs> right, but then really, mm -hmm. if you don't pay attention to it and you don't manage it, yeah. then it gets to a point where it continues for a period of time. Then mm. you're really losing out. You're losing out. Mm -hmm. So, so then, how how do friends and family know? Because at th at this time of the you can't the year you can't go through this alone. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I have been able to tell that I'm at this point, I'm actually going through this depression, mm. how do I help myself? So first of all, you have to identify. Identification yeah. is very important. Mm -hmm. Do not take any changes that happens in your life at any point in time um, lightly because okay. it might lead to something serious, right? Okay. So as you mentioned, you realize that nowadays you be, um, you're becoming more quiet. Okay. You're not engaging in stuff like that. You mm. don't have the energy to do things. It's not really, let's not limit it to minding my business, <laughs> right? Let's look more into what is happening. happening are there any stresses that are happening for which I'm behaving like this or yeah. acting this way? Um, am, I, am I reminiscing over something that happened in the past? Yeah. Is it the stress ahead of me that is leading me to act this way? Yeah. So once we do that inventory and then know where we are, yeah. then we recognize. So then we can seek, right? Mm. So you talk to people, and there are three T's that are very important in mental health. Okay. You got to teach, talk, and treat. Teach, talk, and treat. Right. And who does these? So it has to happen between the one that is going through the other person, friends, family, professionals, okay. and then also, once again, you yourself also have to treat and then be treated by professionals also. Okay. So going back to the point, you have to realize at this point, this is what I'm going through. This is where I'm at. Yeah. And then once you've realized that, it's very important that you start talking to someone about it. Yeah. Someone that you trust. Because in this day and age, you know, yeah, you tell someone your business and then by the time you realize. It everywhere. Exactly. But you see, people, I realize that with people who are, you know, depressed or struggling with these kind of stresses, mm -hmm. they, so, they don't really want to talk to people. Many of them don't want to talk to anybody. They close up. They don't take their calls. Mm -hmm. They don't respond to text, at least not on time. So mm -hmm. it's difficult to reach out to them. So how how then do you know do family and friends actually you know come out to speak to them because they are not even accessible in the first place? Part of the reason is our culture. 
So if I'm at this point, mm. going through something like this, and then I tell you that, hey, this is what I'm going through, then I'll be branded. Right. right. So with the branding that will come with me, which I don't want, mm. then I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. Sometimes also people want to act tough, right? right? So yeah, I can deal with it. I got mm. this, right? But then really you don't have it because as time <laughs> goes on, they realize that it's getting worse. Yeah. So those are some of the things. Then now, how do family and friends deal with it? Yeah. At least you've worked with them. You've known them for some time. Mm. For some of your friends, you can tell their pattern, patterns, right? That's true. So you can track where this person will be at what point in time. time. Then you get a trusted friend with you to go and then talk to the person. Sometimes it helps when it's like, okay, this person is someone that I, sh I feel shy of. You okay. know, this is a respectable person. So if that person is to come to me, it will be very difficult for also me to shut the them. door in their face. Oh, so rather. I will open up to okay. them and then talk to them about what is going on. Okay. Or at least give them a hint of what is going on. Okay. So sometimes too, we should also listen to what we are not being told. How does that come in? Okay. How does that work? So now you come to me, hey, Philip, how are you doing? I'm doing great, but mm. I haven't left the house in two days. Mm. Hey, I'm doing good, but you could tell my eyes are all red and puffy. I haven't yeah. slept in some time. You've been crying as well. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to look at, check out the body language, mm -hmm. you know, the presentation of the person. You know them. So yeah. uh, is this really you? Mm. So though you're telling me you're doing okay, do you really look okay? Yeah. Then you can probe further. The more you probe, then the less resistant they become. Mm. But then if I just tell you, you know, there's a saying in the sense that, you say hi just as courtesy, but yeah. not really to care about that the person. person indeed. Exactly. So if you're just doing it as courtesy, then really you it's not get you wouldn't the get the information. Okay. So you have to do it because you care about the person. But sometimes when you probe, you don't get anything all. And I'm speaking from experience. You you mm -hmm. can try it in different ways, but you still don't get any information from the person because they've made up their minds that they want to deal with whatever they're dealing with by themselves. You know, as I mentioned earlier, you, you have to use different approaches. So you do it yourself, it doesn't work, you get somebody else who in. you believe that that person has a better relationship with to come in and then also try. Mm. What I would say is we should never give up on that individual. Okay. And then also, if you, once you know that person very well, you will know what are some of the problems that they might be going through. So when you probe in and answers are not forthcoming, then try to provide some solution. Okay. Right? So if we know that at this point of the year, my job is very insecure and yeah. probably I have lost my job and I begin to shut down. Yeah. Right? Then we have to identify that, okay, it might be because of this. Mm. So, hey, can we do financial assistance? You know, provide something. Yeah. Can we do some aid in any shape in, or form? Yeah. You know, because sometimes when we just talk about Oh, we'll pray for you. Uh -huh. That doesn't work. <laughs> you know, prayers, like, prayers well. is good enough, yes. but sometimes, you know... You have to have act to... also. Exactly. Yeah. Action has to follow. Exactly. Right. Oh, I see. And so, um, is this treatable so, so much that someone has experienced this over a period of time, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, moving forward... They don't experience it anymore. Yes. So uh, with SAD, uh, seasonal affective disorder, or you know holiday depression, depression. as we team day for today, yeah. um, with that one, typically you get over it after the season. Mm. Typically. Typically. But then there are times where it still hangs on, mm. right? And that is when you have to realize that okay, usually around November through December. And then early parts of January, this is my mood, right? Yeah. So let's pay attention to ourselves also. Okay. That is one important thing. Right. Because if not, then you might think that it's just another day and then all things are equal. Yeah. So once you've noticed that in that two-month period, that is how you usually are. Yeah. And then it's past January at this point and you're still not getting over it. Yeah. Then please, it's getting bad or worse at this point. Yeah. So they should so, see you, people like you? Yes. You should look Therapists. for a professional. Psychologists, right. psychologists, therapists, psychiatrists, mm. you know, social workers, anyone at all, mm. and talk to. Um, in our society, also, we have the natural therapy, you know, where fam is. family comes in and they help, yeah, right? They so you can always, once again, get with the right family member. In your family, you know who you can relate well with, with. and then who also knows you much better That's and true. can help you with situations, right? Okay. So reach out to those individuals. But let's not replace the role of the professionals with family members okay. also.
Right. There's a difference. There is a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, they are professionals for a reason. Yeah. So let's use their services. Um, they get trained, they get paid to do what they do. <laughs> so please, put them to use. All right. All right. And lastly, tell me a bit about the Feel Good experience that you are spearheading. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, the Feel Good experience is an opportunity to educate people on mental health. Um, I've learned over the years that when we talk about mental health, people limit it to people that are crazy, people that are out of touch with reality, yeah. people, the lunatics, right? Yeah. Which is really not true. Mm. There are over 300 diagnosable diseases, mental health diseases yeah. alone. So when we limit it to those individuals, then it is very unfair to all of us. Right. For that reason, if you have something going on, then you would not even be able to identify it as a condition and therefore seek help. For, um, for that reason, since June, I have embarked on educating the populace on uh, mental health yeah. and then creating the awareness. Because the more we talk about it, the more we get to know about it. Yeah. I always say this, if you don't talk about something, it doesn't mean that it does not exist. exist. That is true. Right. So we have to open up, yeah. talk, teach, and then treat. And then treat. Right. So um, December 14th, which is this Saturday, Saturday indeed. Uh, we're having a seminar at the police depot, Tessano, Okay. to educate the masses on mental health. Great. So we have people like Dr. Osei. Um, the mental health CEO, mm -hmm. mental health authority CEO coming. Um, I'll be there. There is a psychiatrist who is also coming, okay. a mental health nurse also coming. There's going to be good music because mm -hmm. I believe very much very that music is a very integral part of therapy. That is true. And then comedy is also that part is. of therapy. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to have some comedians in attendance. Okay. Hence, we bring in the whole package, mm. right? So we use the comedy, music, and then the education itself. Okay, other my, feel good experience. Right, and my videos are also on um, YouTube. YouTube, what's, right. what's the handle? It's Feel Good Services. P-H... P-H-I-L... G-O-O-D. Feel Good Experience. Uh, services. Feel Good Services right. on YouTube as well. Right. Are you so, also on Instagram? Yes. Facebook? Yes. Same. Feel good services. Yes. Okay. Instagram That's... is all one word. Okay. But then Facebook and then YouTube, um, feel good, one word, services, services another, another one. word. All and right. We, um, on those channels, we t take one condition and then we explain, you know, the disease process, the yeah. symptoms, how to handle uh, no, our home or when to seek help. So outside. it's a general mental health um, page, channel dedicated Ex to mental health education as exactly. well. Exactly. All right. Exactly. Well, it's been fantastic speaking to you uh, of Feel Good Services, Philip Oforigan, to meet you, the founder of Feel Good Services, which is a mental health education platform. Thank right. you so much for joining us and speaking to us on holiday depression. I've learned two things today, actually three, talk, um, teach, talk and treat, right. as well as pay attention to yourselves uh, so that you know when you are switching into the depression, depression mood and also speak to a trusted person. All right. Uh, it's been good. Thank you so much for joining us once again.